all that is allotted as coming from thence, wherever it is, from whence he himself came. And finally, waiting for death with a cheerful mind, as being nothing else than a dissolution of the elements of which every living being is compounded. But if there is no harm to the elements themselves, in each continually changing into another, why should a man have any apprehension about the change and dissolution of all the elements? For it is according to nature, and nothing is evil which is according to nature. This Incarnantum. Book 3 We ought to consider not only that our life is daily wasting away, and the smaller part of it is left, but another thing also must be taken into the account, that if a man should live longer, it is quite uncertain whether the understanding will still continue sufficient for the comprehension of things, and retain the power of contemplation which strives to acquire the knowledge of the divine and the human. For if he shall begin to fall into dotage, perspiration and nutrition, and imagination and appetite, and whatever else there is of the kind, will not fail. But the power of making use of ourselves, and filling up the measure of our duty, and clearly separating all appearances, and considering whether a man should now depart from life, and whatever else of the kind absolutely requires a disciplined reason, all this is already extinguished. We must make haste, then, not only because we are daily nearer to death, but also because the conception of things and the understanding of them cease first. We ought to observe also that even the things which follow after the things which are produced according to nature contain something pleasing and attractive. For instance, when bread is baked, some parts are split at the surface, and these parts which thus open and have a certain fashion contrary to the purpose of the baker's art are beautiful in a manner and in a peculiar way excite a desire for eating. And again, figs, when they are quite ripe, gape open, and in the ripe olives, the very circumstance of their being near to rottenness adds a peculiar beauty to the fruit. And the ears of corn bending down, and the lion's eyebrows, and the foam which flows from the mouth of wild boars, and many other things, though they are far from being beautiful if a man should examine them severally, still, because they are consequent upon the things which are formed by nature, help to adorn them, and they please the mind. So that if a man should have a feeling and deeper insight with respect to the things which are produced in the universe, there is hardly one of those which follow by way of consequence, which will not seem to him to be in a manner disposed so as to give pleasure. And so he will see even the real gaping jaws of wild beasts with no less pleasure than those which painters and sculptors show by imitation. And in an old woman and an old man, he will be able to see a certain maturity and comeliness and the attractive loveliness of young persons. He will be able to look on with chaste eyes, and many such things will present themselves, not pleasing to every man, but to him only who has become truly familiar with nature and her works. Hippocrates, after curing many diseases, himself fell sick and died. The Chaldei foretold the deaths of many, and then fate caught them too. Alexander and Pompeius and Caius Caesar, after so often completely destroying whole cities and in battle cutting to pieces many tens of thousands of cavalry and infantry, themselves too at last departed from life. Heraclitus, after so many speculations on the conflagration of the universe, was filled with water internally and died smeared all over with mud. And lice destroyed Democritus, and other lice killed Socrates. What means all this? Thou hast embarked, thou hast made the voyage, thou art come to shore. Get out. If indeed to another life there is no want of gods, not even here. But if to a state without sensation thou wilt cease to be held by pains and pleasures, and to be a slave to the vessel, which is as much inferior as that which serves it is superior. For the one is intelligence and deity, the other is earth and corruption. Do not waste the remainder of thy life in thoughts about others, when thou dost not refer thy thoughts to some object of common utility. For thou losest the opportunity of doing something else, when thou hast such thoughts as these. What is such a person doing, and why? And what is he saying? And what is he thinking of? And what is he contriving? 
and whatever else of the kind makes us wander away from the observation of our own ruling power. We ought then to check in these series of our thoughts everything that is without a purpose and useless, but most of all the over-curious feeling and the malignant. And a man should use himself to think of those things only about which, if one should suddenly ask, What hast thou now in thy thoughts? With perfect openness thou mightest immediately answer, This or that, so that from thy words it should be plain that everything in thee is simple and benevolent, and such as befits a social animal, and one that cares not for thoughts about pleasure or sensual enjoyments at all, nor has any rivalry or envy and suspicion, or anything else for which thou wouldest blush if thou shouldest say that thou hadst it in thy mind. For the man who is such, and no longer delays being among the number of the best, is like a priest and minister of the gods, using too the deity which is planted within him, which makes the man uncontaminated by pleasure, unharmed by any pain, untouched by any insult, feeling no wrong, a fighter in the noblest fight, one who cannot be overpowered by any passion, died deep with justice, accepting with all his soul everything which happens and is assigned to him as his portion. And not often, nor yet without great necessity, and for the general interest, imagining what another says, or does, or thinks. For it is only what belongs to himself that he makes the matter for his activity, and he constantly thinks of that which is allotted to himself out of the sum total of things, and he makes his own acts fair, and he is persuaded that his own portion is good. For the lot which is assigned to each man is carried along with him, and carries him along with it, and he remembers also that every rational animal is his kinsman, and that to care for all men is according to man's nature, and a man should hold on to the opinion, not of all, but of those only who confessedly live according to nature. But as to those who live not so, he always bears in mind what kind of men they are both at home and from home, both by day and by night, and what they are and with what men they live an impure life. Accordingly, he does not value at all the praise which comes from such men, since they are not even satisfied with themselves. Labor not unwillingly, nor without regard to the common interest, nor without due consideration, nor without distraction, nor let studied ornament set off thy thoughts, and be not either a man of many words, or busy about too many things. And further, let the deity which is in thee be the guardian of a living being, manly and of ripe age, and engaged in matter political, and a Roman, and a ruler who has taken his post like a man, waiting for the signal which summons him from life, and ready to go, having need neither of oath nor of any man's testimony. Be cheerful also, and seek not external help, nor the tranquility which others give. A man must then stand erect, not be kept erect by others. If thou findest in human life anything better than justice, truth, temperance, fortitude, and, in a word, anything better than thy own mind's self-satisfaction in the things which it enables thee to do according to right reason, and in the condition that is assigned to thee without thy own choice, if, I say, thou seest anything better than this, turn to it with all thy soul, and enjoy that which thou hast found to be the best. But if nothing appears to be better than the deity which is planted in thee, which has subjected to itself all thy appetites, and carefully examines all the impressions, and, as Socrates said, has detached itself from the persuasions of sense, and has submitted itself to the gods, and cares for mankind. If thou findest everything else smaller and of less value than this, give place to nothing else. For if thou dost once diverge and incline to it, thou wilt no longer without distraction be able to give the preference to that good thing, which is thy proper possession, and thy own. For it is not right that anything of any other kind, such as praise from the many, or power, or enjoyment of pleasure, should come into competition with that which is rationally and politically, or practically, good. All these things, even though they may seem to adapt themselves to the better things in a small degree, obtain the superiority all at once and carry us away. But do thou, I say, simply and freely choose the better, and hold to it but that which is useful is the better. Well then, if it is useful to thee as a rational being, keep to it. 
But if it is only useful to thee as an animal, say so, and maintain thy judgment without arrogance. Only take care that thou makest the inquiry by a sure method. Never value anything as profitable to thyself which shall compel thee to break thy promise, to lose thy self-respect, to hate any man, to suspect, to curse, to act the hypocrite, to desire anything which needs walls and curtains. For he who has preferred to everything else his own intelligence and daemon and the worship of its excellence, acts no tragic part, does not groan, will not need either solitude or much company. And what is chief of all, he will live without either pursuing or flying from death. But whether for a longer or a shorter time he shall have the soul enclosed in the body, he cares not at all. For even if he must depart immediately, he will go as readily as if he were going to do anything else which can be done with decency and order. Taking care of this only, all through life, that his thoughts turn not away from anything which belongs to an intelligent animal and a member of a civil community. In the mind of one who is chastened and purified, thou wilt find no corrupt matter, nor impurity, nor any sore skinned over. Nor is his life incomplete when fate overtakes him, as one may say of an actor who leaves the stage before ending and finishing the play. Besides, there is in him nothing servile, nor affected, nor too closely bound to other things, nor yet detached from other things, nothing worthy of blame, nothing which seeks a hiding place. Reverence, the faculty which produces opinion. On this faculty it entirely depends whether there shall exist in thy ruling part any opinion inconsistent with nature and the constitution of the rational animal. And this faculty promises freedom from hasty judgment and friendship towards men and obedience to the gods. Throwing away, then, all things, hold to these only which are few. And besides, bear in mind that every man lives only this present time, which is an indivisible point, and that all the rest of his life is either past or it is uncertain. Short, then, is the time which every man lives, and small the nook of the earth where he lives, and short, too, the longest posthumous fame, and even this only continued by a succession of poor human beings who will very soon die, and who know not even themselves, much less him who died long ago. To the aids which have been mentioned, let this one still be added. Make for thyself a definition or description of the thing which is presented to thee, so as to see distinctly what kind of a thing it is in its substance, in its nudity, in its complete entirety, and tell thyself its proper name, and the names of the things of which it has been compounded, and into which it will be resolved. For nothing is so productive of elevation of mind as to be able to examine methodically and truly every object which is presented to thee in life, and always to look at things so as to see at the same time what kind of universe this is, and what kind of use everything performs in it, and what value everything has with reference to the whole, and what with reference to man, who is a citizen of the highest city, of which all other cities are like families, what each thing is, and of what it is composed, and how long is the nature of this thing to endure which now makes an impression on me, and what virtue I have need of with respect to it, such as gentleness, manliness, truth, fidelity, simplicity, contentment, and the rest. Wherefore, on every occasion a man should say, This comes from God, and this is according to the appointment and the spinning of the thread of destiny, and such like coincidence and chance. And this is from one of the same stock, and a kinsman and partner, one who knows not, however, what is according to his nature. But I know. For this reason I behave towards him according to the natural law of fellowship, with benevolence and justice. At the same time, however, in things indifferent, I attempt to ascertain the value of each. If thou workest at that which is before thee, following right reason seriously, vigorously, calmly, without allowing anything else to distract thee, but keeping thy divine part pure, as if thou shouldest be bound to give it back immediately, if thou holdest to this, expecting nothing, fearing nothing, but satisfied with thy present activity according to nature, and with heroic truth in every word and sound which thou utterest, thou wilt live happy. There is no man who is able to prevent this.
as physicians have always their instruments and knives ready for cases which suddenly require their skill, so do thou have principles ready for the understanding of things divine and human, and for doing everything, even the smallest, with a recollection of the bond which unites the divine and human to one another. For neither wilt thou do anything well which pertains to man, without at the same time having a reference to things divine, nor the contrary. No longer wander at hazard, for neither wilt thou read thy own memoirs, nor the acts of the ancient Romans and Hellenes, and the selections from books which thou wast reserving for thy old age. Hasten, then, to the end which thou hast before thee, and, throwing away idle hopes, come to thine own aid, and if thou carest at all for thyself, while it is in thy power. They know not how many things are signified by the words stealing, sowing, buying, keeping quiet, seeing what ought to be done. For this is not affected by the eyes, but another kind of vision. Body, soul, intelligence. To the body belongs sensation. To the soul, appetites. To the intelligence, principles. To receive the impressions of forms by means of appearances belongs even to animals. To be pulled by the strings of desire belongs both to wild beasts and to men who have made themselves into women, and to a Phalaris and a Nero, and to have the intelligence that guides to the things which appear suitable belongs also to those who do not believe in the gods, and who betray their country, and do their impure deeds when they have shut the doors. If then everything else is common to all that I have mentioned, there remains that which is peculiar to the good man, to be pleased and content with what happens, and with the thread which is spun for him, and not to defile the divinity which is planted in his breast, nor disturb it by a crowd of images, but to preserve it tranquil, following it obediently as a god, neither saying anything contrary to the truth, nor doing anything contrary to justice. And if all men refuse to believe that he lives a simple, modest, and contented life, he is neither angry with any of them, nor does he deviate from the way which leads to the end of life, to which a man ought to come pure, tranquil, ready to depart, and without any compulsion, perfectly reconciled to his lot. Book 4 That which rules within, when it is according to nature, is so affected with respect to the events which happen, that it always easily adapts itself to that which is possible and is presented to it. For it requires no definite material, but it moves towards its purpose, under certain conditions, however, and it makes a material for itself out of that which opposes it, as fire lays hold of what falls into it, by which a small light would have been extinguished. But when the fire is strong, it soon appropriates to itself the matter which is heaped on it, and consumes it, and rises higher by the means of this very material. Let no act be done without a purpose, nor otherwise than according to the perfect principles of art. Men seek retreats for themselves, houses in the country, seashores, and mountains, and thou too art wont to desire such things very much, but this is altogether a mark of the most common sort of men, for it is in thy power whenever thou shalt choose to retire into thyself. For nowhere either, with more quiet or more freedom from trouble, does a man retire than into his own soul, particularly when he has within him such thoughts that by looking into them he is immediately in perfect tranquility. And I affirm that tranquility is nothing else than the good ordering of the mind. Constantly, then, give to thyself this retreat, and renew thyself, and let thy principles be brief and fundamental, which, as soon as thou shalt recur to them, will be sufficient to cleanse the soul completely, and to send thee back free from all discontent with the things to which thou returnest. For with what art thou discontented? With the badness of men? Recall to thy mind this conclusion, that rational animals exist for one another, and that to endure is a part of justice, and that men do wrong involuntarily, and consider how many already, after mutual enmity, suspicion, hatred, and fighting, have been stretched dead reduced to ashes, and be quiet at last. But perhaps thou art dissatisfied with that which is assigned to thee out of the universe. Recall to thy recollection this alternative. Either there is providence or atoms, fortuitous concurrence of things, 
or remember the arguments by which it has been proved that the world is a kind of political community, and be quiet at last. But perhaps corporeal things will still fasten upon thee. Consider then further that the mind mingles not with the breath, whether moving gently or violently, when it has once drawn itself apart and discovered its own power. And think also of all that thou hast heard and assented to about pain and pleasure, and be quiet at last. But perhaps the desire of the thing called fame will torment thee. See how soon everything is forgotten, and look at the chaos of infinite time on each side of the present, and the emptiness of applause, and the changeableness and want of judgment in those who pretend to give praise, and the narrowness of the space within which it is circumscribed, and be quiet at last. For the whole earth is a point, and how small a nook in it is this thy dwelling, and how few are there in it, and what kind of people are they who will praise thee? This then remains. Remember to retire into this little territory of thy own, and above all, do not distract or strain thyself, but be free, and look at things as a man, as a human being, as a citizen, as a mortal. But among the things readiest to thy hand to which thou shalt turn, let there be these, which are two. One is that things do not touch the soul, for they are external and remain immovable. But our perturbations come only from the opinion which is within. The other is that all these things which thou seest change immediately and will no longer be, and constantly bear in mind how many of these changes thou hast already witnessed. The universe is transformation. Life is opinion. If our intellectual part is common, the reason also in respect of which we are rational beings is common. If this is so, common also is the reason which commands us what to do and what not to do. If this is so, there is a common law also. If this is so, we are fellow citizens. If this is so, we are members of some political community. If this is so, the world is in a manner a state. For of what other common political community will anyone say that the whole human race are members? And from thence, from this common political community, comes also our very intellectual faculty and reasoning faculty, and our capacity for law. Or whence do they come? For as my earthly part is a portion given to me from certain earth, and that which is watery from another element, and that which is hot and fiery from some peculiar source, for nothing comes out of that which is nothing, as nothing also returns to non-existence, so also the intellectual part comes from some source. Death is such as generation is, a mystery of nature. Composition out of these same elements, and a decomposition into the same, and altogether not a thing of which any man should be ashamed, for it is not contrary to the nature of a reasonable animal, and not contrary to the reason of our constitution. It is natural that these things should be done by such persons, it is a matter of necessity, and if a man will not have it so, he will not allow the fig tree to have juice. But by all means bear this in mind, that within a very short time both thou and he will be dead, and soon not even your names will be left behind. Take away thy opinion, and then there is taken away the complaint, I have been harmed. Take away the complaint, I have been harmed, and the harm is taken away. That which does not make a man worse than he was also does not make his life worse, nor does it harm him either from without or from within. The nature of that which is universally useful has been compelled to do this. Consider that everything which happens, happens justly, and if thou observest carefully, thou wilt find it to be so. I do not say only with respect to the continuity of these series of things, but with respect to what is just, and as if it were done by one who assigns to each thing its value. Observe then, as thou hast begun, and whatever thou doest, do it in conjunction with this, the being good, and in the sense in which a man is properly understood to be good. Keep to this, in every action. Do not have such an opinion of things as he who has done thee wrong, or such as he wishes thee to have, but look at them as they are in truth. A man should always have these two rules in readiness, the one, to do only whatever the reason of the ruling and legislating faculty may suggest for the use of men. The other, to change thy opinion, if there is any one at hand who sets thee right, 
and moves thee from any opinion. But this change of opinion must proceed only from a certain persuasion, as of what is just or of common advantage, and the like not because it appears pleasant or brings reputation. Hast thou reason? I have. Why then dost not thou use it? For if this does its own work, what else dost thou wish? Thou hast existed as a part. Thou shalt disappear in that which produced thee, but rather thou shalt be received back into its seminal principle by transmutation. Many grains of frankincense on the same altar, one falls before, another falls after, but it makes no difference. Within ten days thou wilt seem a god to those whom thou art now a beast and an ape, if thou wilt return to thy principles and the worship of reason. Do not act as if thou wert going to live ten thousand years. Death hangs over thee. While thou livest, while it is in thy power, be good. How much trouble he avoids who does not look to see what his neighbor says or does or thinks, but only to what he does himself, that it may be just and pure. Or, as Agathon says, look not round at the depraved morals of others, but run straight along the line without deviating from it. He who has a vehement desire for posthumous fame does not consider that every one of those who remember him will himself also die very soon. Then again also, they who have succeeded them, until the whole remembrance shall have been extinguished, as it is transmitted through men who foolishly admire and perish. But suppose that those who will remember are even immortal, and that the remembrance will be immortal. What then is this to thee? And I say not what it is to the dead, but what is it to the living? What is praise, except indeed so far as it has a certain utility? For thou now rejectest unreasonably the gift of nature, clinging to something else. Everything which is in any way beautiful is beautiful in itself, and terminates in itself not having praise as part of itself. Neither worse than nor better is a thing made by being praised. I affirm this also of the things which are called beautiful by the vulgar, for example, material things and works of art. That which is really beautiful has no need of anything, not more than law, not more than truth, not more than benevolence or modesty. Which of these things is beautiful because it is praised or spoiled by being blamed? Is such a thing as an emerald made worse than it was if it is not praised? Or gold, ivory, purple, a liar? a little knife, a flower, a shrub. If souls continue to exist, how does the air contain them from eternity? But how does the earth contain the bodies of those who have been buried from time so remote? For as here, the mutation of these bodies after a certain continuance, whatever it may be, and their dissolution, make room for other dead bodies. So the souls which are removed into the air after subsisting for some time are transmuted and diffused, and assume a fiery nature by being received into the seminal intelligence of the universe, and in this way make room for the fresh souls which come to dwell there. And this is the answer which a man might give on the hypothesis of souls continuing to exist. But we must not only think of the number of bodies which are thus buried, but also of the number of animals which are daily eaten by us, and the other animals, for what a number is consumed, and thus in a manner buried in the bodies of those who feed on them. And nevertheless, this earth receives them by reason of the changes of these bodies into blood, and the transformations into the aerial or the fiery element. What is the investigation into the truth in this matter? The division into that which is material, and that which is the cause of form, the formal. Do not be whirled about. But in every movement have respect to justice, and on the occasion of every impression maintain the faculty of comprehension or understanding. Everything harmonizes with me, which is harmonious to thee, O universe. Nothing for me is too early nor too late, which is in due time for thee. Everything is fruit to me which thy seasons bring, O nature. From thee are all things, in thee are all things, to thee all things return. The poet says, Dear city of Cecrops, and wilt not thou say, Dear city of Zeus? Occupy thyself with few things, says the philosopher, if thou wouldst be tranquil. But consider if it would not be better to say, Do what is necessary, and whatever the reason of the animal which is naturally social requires, and as it requires. 
for this brings not only the tranquility which comes from doing well, but also that which comes from doing few things. For the greatest part of what we say and do being unnecessary, if a man takes this away, he will have more leisure and less uneasiness. Accordingly, on every occasion a man should ask himself, is this one of the unnecessary things? Now a man should take away not only unnecessary acts, but also unnecessary thoughts, for thus superfluous acts will not follow after. Try how the life of the good man suits thee, the life of him who is satisfied with his portion out of the whole, and satisfied with his own just acts and benevolent disposition. Hast thou seen those things? Look also at these. Do not disturb thyself. Make thyself all simplicity. Does any one do wrong? Is it to himself that he does the wrong? Has anything happened to thee? Well, out of the universe, from the beginning, everything which happens has been apportioned and spun out to thee. In a word, thy life is short. Thou must turn to profit the present by the aid of reason and justice. Be sober in thy relaxation. Either it is a well-arranged universe or a chaos huddled together, but still a universe. But can a certain order subsist in thee and disorder in the all? And this too, when all things are so separated and diffused and sympathetic. A black character, a womanish character, a stubborn character, bestial, childish, animal, stupid, counterfeit, scurrilous, fraudulent, tyrannical. If he is a stranger to the universe who does not know what is in it, no less is he a stranger who does not know what is going on in it. He is a runaway who flies from social reason. He is blind who shuts the eyes of understanding. He is poor who has need of another and has not from himself all things which are useful for life. He is an abscess on the universe who withdraws and separates himself from the reason of our common nature through being displeased with the things which happen. For the same nature produces this and has produced thee too. He is a peace rent asunder from the state who tears his own soul from that of reasonable animals, which is one. The one is a philosopher without a tunic and the other without a book. Here is another half naked. Bread I have not, he says, and I abide by reason, and I do not get the means of living out of my learning, and I abide by my reason. Love the art, poor as it may be, which thou hast learned, and be content with it, and pass through the rest of life like one who has entrusted to the gods with his whole soul all that he has, making thyself neither the tyrant nor the slave of any man. Consider, for example, the times of Vespasian, Thou wilt see all these things, people marrying, bringing up children, sick, dying, warring, feasting, trafficking, cultivating the ground, flattering, obstinately arrogant, suspecting, plotting, wishing for someone to die, grumbling about the present, loving, keeping up treasure, desiring consulship, kingly power. Well then, that life of these people no longer exists at all. Again, Remove to the times of Trajan. Again, all is the same. Their life too is gone. In like manner, view also the other epochs of time and of whole nations, and see how many after great efforts soon fell and were resolved into the elements. But chiefly, thou shouldest think of those whom thou hast thyself known distracting themselves about idle things, neglecting to do what was in accordance with their proper constitution, and to hold firmly to this and to be content with it. And herein it is necessary to remember that the attention given to everything has its proper value and proportion. For thus thou wilt not be dissatisfied if thou appliest thyself to smaller matters no further than is fit. The words which were formerly familiar are now antiquated. So also the names of those who were famed of old are now in a manner antiquated. Camillus, Seso, Volessus, Leonatus, and a little after also, Scipio and Cato, then Augustus, then also Hadrianus and Antoninus. For all things soon pass away and become a mere tale, and complete oblivion soon buries them. And I say this of those who have shown in a wondrous way. For the rest, as soon as they have breathed out their breath, they are gone, and no man speaks of them. And to conclude the matter, 
What is even an eternal remembrance? A mere nothing. What then is that about which we ought to employ our serious pains? This one thing, thoughts, 